All right, guys, we're on night two here. We're gonna try and get this entire rear bevel shaft out of here. That will give us room to pull that transmission shaft and also to clean out the rest of that oil. So let's not waste any time. I'm gonna get the engine hoist over here and we'll get chains on this shaft here See if we can pick it up. Okay guys, in the book they want you to wrap like a cable sling around this side and then on the other side, I assume to balance the shaft. I don't have anything that's small enough to fit in there. So I just moved my chain here to the center or close to center and I'm hoping I can balance it enough to get it out. If it seems like it's too big of a problem can always set it back down. We can wait and try something else. But let's give it a go, see what this is like. All right, guys, as suspected here, when we lifted, we're, we're clearing on this side, but on that other side, we're not getting over that lip. And I can't bring it this way because of this nut that we had discussed about in the last video. But I think what I'm going to do is mark that, loosen that nut, let me bring that shaft towards us so I can get it off from that lip on the other side there. to try and square this up again. I'm starting to pull a little crooked here. I can tell we're gonna be heavy on the right side. Well guys, I missed it with the camera, but that actually did the trick. All I did was I was backing that nut off and I still had just a pinch of tension on the chain here and it just kind of jumped up. I wish I had had it on film, but with it this far up, I'm just gonna keep lifting on it, try and get the whole works out here. The shaft is out, so I think what we're gonna do is I will back up the engine hoist here, get the shaft out of the way. And we'll continue diving in and pulling the rest of that transmission apart. Maybe even start doing some cleaning of that oil. We'll see how it wants to work with us. Well, with the shaft on the ground here, we can get our first look at what the steering clutches look like. And to me, I think they actually look fairly good. It looks like there's a lot of material left in there. These teeth don't appear to be too worn. For the most part it's kind of sad because I think they probably had quite a bit of life left in them we'll find out once we actually measure maybe I'm wrong but just from what I can see it looks like there's material in between all them discs quite a bit of it all right guys first look inside with that shaft gone really there's not that much oil left in there I know it may look like quite a bit just from the reflection but I can actually see the castings below it see the shape where it runs down to the drain also I tried picking up on this shaft to try to get it out of there and I think what we're actually getting hung up on is that reverse idler now the book says that it will come out with the reverse idler still in but I don't see any harm in taking it out it needs to come out anyway so I think that's what we're gonna move on to next See guys, this is exactly what I mean. I try to show you guys the reverse idler and fins in there. 
showing you all for me. So what we need to do is pull them six bolts out and then the whole unit comes out as one large piece. All right, same procedure as normal. They're all broke loose by hand. Got the impact in there now. Get all six of those out and we we'll, should be able to pull that reverse idler out. Uh, according to the book, there's some shims back in there. I'll have to be on the lookout for. Let's get after it. Okay guys, that's a, quite a tight fit. I'm going from the inside of the brass punch, driving it outward. I think I got it out far enough now, I can just get a pry bar in there and kind of bring it the rest of the way. Pry bar didn't work that well. We're gonna switch over to the slide hammer. That seemed to work on these front two, getting those out. I should be able to get that finger behind there now, I got it out far enough. Okay, it's finally out. I'll be honest, that is the hardest thing I've taken off this entire crawler to date. It blows my mind at how tight that thing was in there. It would move, but I think we were only moving maybe 10 thousandths of an inch at a time. And as you can see, that's not a small piece of iron. I'll get it out here in the open, show you a little better with it out here on the track. You see here, it's a considerable amount of iron. I'd say it's probably somewhere in the five inch diameter, probably about five inches long as well. And the entire time we were fighting this, you can see the marks in it from coming out. This one released right away. But this one had to push all that sludge through there and it's it's a tightly machined fit but it's out now let's move on to that transmission shaft one last thing before we move on make sure keep all the shims that go with this with this piece that's what sets the backlash on your teeth for your reverse idler so back to the transmission here we need to get that gear, spacer, I believe that's one gear, there should be another spacer, I think those two are one, and I don't remember if there's another spacer or not in there. Anyway, all of that needs to slide off the splines on that shaft. To do that, we need to come back here and pull this shaft, which is the end of it's right here, pull that this way and take these gears out accordingly. Once we get far enough, we should be able to then either pull this shaft all the way out the back or the book shows coming out the front. But since this rear shaft is gone now, I believe we might be able to get it pulled out of the back.
That just leaves us with the last gear there. And the shaft is as far back as it can go. So I think we're gonna end up having to pry that forward while we hang on to that shaft. Okay, with everything off the shaft, according to the book, it has to come back forward into that transmission housing. I want to see if we can try getting it out of the rear. There we go guys, we have empty housings. So what's next for this? We need to put that big drain plug back in. We're going to fill this up with some diesel, kind of let that soak overnight. We'll come back, stir it up a little bit, kind of get that uh, diesel to dilute this down. And then we'll drain it all back out. Hopefully the next time you guys see it, it'll be not spotless, but a lot cleaner than it is now. And there really isn't that much left in. I know the camera makes it look like a lot, but it's just like a quarter inch of this really, really thick tar. But that's what we need to get stirred into that diesel, kind of let them dilute, and then I think we can move on from this and be done with it so thanks everyone for watching I know this might kind of drag on a little bit this has been a, a bit of a fight trying to get some of this out but I appreciate everyone sticking around we will be getting into final drives we will be taking tracks off we need to get this rear casting down to absolutely nothing so that it can go out and get blasted so that we can repaint it. And then we'll throw everything back together, put new parts where necessary, do what we can to get this crawler running again. The diesel dilution has begun. Well guys, if you like what you see, go ahead and hit the like button. Subscribe for more. We'll catch you on the next one. Should we go inside? I guess it's time to go inside. <laughs>